Hate crimes are on the rise, both here in New York City and across the country. In fact, from 2015 to 2016, hate crimes rose about 5% nationally, marking the first time in over a decade that the country has seen consecutive annual increases for such offenses. That, according to data collected by the Center for the Study of Hate and Extremism at California State University, and exclusively provided to HuffPost. Here in New York City, hate crimes jumped 24% in 2016, including a five-fold increase over a two-week period around last year's presidential election. Hate crimes are also up in the city so far this year. And for more on these numbers and what they mean, I'm joined now by Christopher Mathias, the national reporter for HuffPost, who helped break this story. Christopher, welcome back on the program. Thank you. So, Christopher, according to your article, the FBI has registered increases in hate crimes during every presidential election year, right, since they've been keeping these records. Why is that? So I think most experts uh, attribute that to just kind of general heightened political tensions uh, surrounding election years. And so people get upset because... Yeah, people get riled up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So was 2016 the same as the previous years or was it different? Uh, what made 2016 interesting and special uh, is, like you mentioned, it's you know the first time since 2004 that we've seen consecutive annual increases. But the really interesting thing is that there were concentrated increases around Election Day itself. <laughs> um, and like you mentioned, New York City saw a five-fold increase over a two-week two period. And similar things were happening in the last quarter of the year in... Uh, Philadelphia, Seattle, Boston, and, and a lot of other major cities. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, the hate crimes predate President Trump and predate his election. In fact, there was a, a rise in hate crimes from 2014 to 2015. What did those numbers tell us? That was also an election year. I mean, that was when the election started in earnest. Um, oh. Oh, you include that as a part yeah, of Yeah, I, I include that, and I think experts mm -hmm. include that as well. Um, you know, tr Trump launched his candidacy in 2015. Uh, another part of that was at the end of 2015, you had the Paris terror attack, you had the mm. San Bernardino terror, terror attack, and that's when uh, Trump and other people were really ratcheting up their anti-Muslim rhetoric. Mm -hmm. That's when Trump called for his Muslim ban. Mm -hmm. uh, that's when he wanted mosques to be shuttered. Um, and into the 2015, there was a 67% increase in anti-Muslim hate mm. crimes. Uh -huh. Is it mostly in the cities that uh, the hate crimes have risen? Um, it's in both. Uh, so the study that um, California State did uh, had two data sets. One work, looked at 31 major cities, the other yeah. looked at 13 states. And in both those data sets, there was a, a, about a 5 to 6 percent increase. Um, so it's not only cities, but... But it's, mo but it, it's more in cities, right? It's, it's more in cities. It, it, I mean, what struck me from reading your article mm -hmm. is that these hate crimes are happening in, you know, the most progressive cities that, that you can think of. No, why is that? Absolutely. I mean, it's, uh, it's a little unclear, but like, like you mentioned, most of the major cities that saw these upticks, uh, you know, were blue cities. Yeah. Um, part, of, part of the reason for that uptick, it could be those cities are, are, do a better job at tracking hate crimes than uh, a lot of other hmm. cities. Um, and it's also, you know, a place like New York and a lot of these blue cities are very diverse places. Yeah. Uh, you know, New York's almost a minority majority city yeah. and there's, you know, for lack, of, for lack of a better way to put it, there's a bigger pool of people to be targeted for hate. Yeah, but, but you would think there'd be a lesser pool of people who would commit these crimes, yeah. right? And this I, is an accepting city for diversity and tolerance. It's the last place you would think there'd be a 24% spike sure, in hate crime. Sure, and, you know, and but we have this discussion every time a big hate crime happens in a progressive city. Mm. Portland is supposed to be this progressive utopia, right? But right. That, that was the site of that awful murder on the train. Right. Um, I, like no place is, you know, every place is vulnerable to this, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think when you talk to experts, they'll say, you know, what's happened over the last two years is kind of the mainstreaming of white nationalism. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. and the refusal to condemn white nationalism in a lot of cases uh -huh. that might be contributing to this uptick. So do we have a sense, are there particular groups who are committing these crimes? Um, has some statistics been drawn up about that? The, the people committing the crimes? Committing it first. Um, I, I haven't seen any stats about uh, who's committing. I mean, anecdotally, it's mostly white people. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as people being targeted... Yeah, that's the um, second part of the second question. The second part of the question, yeah. So in New York... Um, it's typically Jews are the uh, targets of most of the attacks. Is that right? Uh, and then across the country, it's typically 
um, either African Americans or LGBT Americans. Mm -hmm. um, interesting thing about last year's data, six of the seven cities that um, actually, you know, broke down uh, who was being targeted mm -hmm. all saw increases in um, anti-Muslim hate crimes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So is that on the rise, anti-Muslim hate crimes? That's the, well, it definitely was on the rise in 2015 and the preliminary data for 2016, mm -hmm. it looks like it's on the rise as well. So you talk in your article about the multiple p potential reasons yeah. uh, why, why this is happening. Tell us. Sure. Um, so like we mentioned, it's an election year, so there's these heightened political tensions. Mm -hmm. um, but was, what was distinctive, obviously, um, about you know the last two years was kind of the rhetoric we were hearing yeah. uh, from certain candidates, right. and um, you know experts always point to back after 9/11, there was a huge uh, increase in anti-Muslim hate crimes. Then Bush gave a speech that said Islam is peace, uh, and you can look at look at the stats, and immediately after that, the anti-Muslim hate crimes just drop. Mm -hmm. So like basically, you know, politicians they have they have power to. Yeah shape, uh, you know, what's happening on the ground. Of course, yeah. of course. You know, it's clear from the, from the, the, the person who conducted this study mm -hmm. uh, that he believes that it, uh, you know, he minces no words. That it's, the, it's the rhetoric coming from uh, President Trump. Mm -hmm. um, you concluded that that's accurate? Yeah, I think, that's, I think it's accurate. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we actually tracked, um, at HuffPost, we tracked, we had an Islamophobia project where we tracked anti-Muslim hate incidents over 2016, um, there were at least you know 15 that we found where the, the attackers were uh, Trump supporters or they mm -hmm. invoked Trump's name. Mm -hmm. um, I was in Charlottesville um, mm -hmm. and I saw all these white nationalists in the park, uh, ho you know, holding signs, uh, praising Trump, wearing mm -hmm. "Make America Great Again" hats. Mm -hmm. uh, like there is an emboldened bigotry in this country, and, and Trump bears some responsibility. Has the Department of Justice uh, made any comments about uh, the rising hate crime? Sure. Uh, well, Jeff, they haven't necessarily commented on the rise in hate crimes, but Jeff Sessions earlier this year, um, you know, basically said that they are dedicated to aggressively prosecuting mm -hmm. hate crimes on a federal level when that's necessary. Usually, mm -hmm. that's a state level prosecution. Mm -hmm. And the data is obviously not. Finished being collected yet for 2017, but how does it look so far? It's not looking good. Um, basically, Brian Levin at Cal State, uh, you know, looked at 13 cities and mm. compared to this time last year, uh, there's about a 22% increase in those cities already. Yeah. So right. we'll see how it pans out. We will see, and we'll have you back and talk about it again. Christopher, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me.